Who's ready? I <laughs> love the people at the front. You're my favourite. You might get all the attention. Um, welcome. Hope everyone can hear me. Can everyone see us? Good. Come and come up the front if you like. We're not too scary. Um, my name's Lee Chantel. My guest tonight's Raymond. Nice to see you all. Oh, they can hear you too. That helps. So, um, my name is Lee Chantel. I'm the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland. We've been putting on all these um, vegan food demos and the talks over this weekend. Um, so, I just wanted to go through um, what vegans eat. So, the title of my talk today is What Do Vegans Eat? And we're just going to give a bit of an example of a few easy things and the vegan staples so that you can learn a few things about that. And Raymond is from Vegan Palette and he's going to answer a few vegan nutrition questions. So all the hard stuff we'll give to him and I'll just do all the easy stuff, okay? Because it's a bit late in the night, if you know what I mean. And um, so yeah, let's start. Um, so I've been a vegan for 20 years, just celebrated my 20th anniversary in January. And um, I went vegetarian two years before that. And I went vegetarian originally because I didn't want any animals to die, especially just for me to eat them. And um, I decided to do that after I made the conscious connection between life that once was and the death that I was about to consume when I was about to have a, a leg of lamb, part of a leg of lamb with my family one Saturday night when we always used to have roast leg of lamb. And um, I knew it was a lamb's leg because that was literally what it was called and um, once I made that connection I'm like oh I can't do anything like this anymore stopped eating red meat after a while I stopped eating white meat and um, then found out about the dairy and egg industries and how they're very horrific and the thing the reason I went vegetarian was for animals and once I found out about dairy and egg industries I went vegan so that's you know, 20 years. I've been running a website called vivalavegan.net for over a decade. And um, that was when veganism wasn't even on trend, hashtag on trend. So now it is, and there's a heap more people who know about veganism. And um, yeah, we'll just hope to share some of our wisdom with you tonight. Raymond, do you want to talk about why you went vegan? Uh, yeah, actually, it took me five years to become vegan. Um, I was the biggest meat eater out of all my friends. Whenever there was a seafood buffet, and sashimi, or like Marriott's, or all those fancy places where you pay hundred dollars per person, I ate the most. So I was really into quality, and I guess the taste of food. Um, so it took me five years to become vegan. I actually became vegan early this year, in January or late December. Uh, so it's only been about four months or so. And it was a struggle, you know, because it's, it's really hard to change quickly unless you, you know what you want to believe in and things like that. So, um, just speak this up. My first occurrence was actually six, seven years ago. And one of my good friends, she was vegan, and she told me she wanted, if I wanted to go to a vegan restaurant, I'm like, no. <laughs> Straight up, no. I'm like, how can we have food without meat? This doesn't make sense. Uh, just out of curiosity, who in the crowd is vegan? Uh, this is what I don't want to talk to. Who's vegetarian? Who's um, non vegetarian? Yeah, and who's curious about being vegetarian or vegan? No one. Yeah, one person. Nice. Just so I know who to, how to, you know, um, present this talk and what information to give out. So I'm a dietitian, uh, I practice in West End. I'll be talking to you about the little things like the minerals and vitamins that we require. Because once we know what we need to eat, we need to know, sorry, once we know what vitamins we need and minerals, that tells us what nutrients and food groups we need to have to make sure we get those. Um, but yeah, how do we Between the religions. It was so you said it took you a few years. Oh, Why? Years. How do you get from um, no, not even going to a, veg, a vegan place to being vegan? It was little things. I always. I knew about, because I was studying nutrition, you have to learn about all the different food uh, diet types, right? There was vegetarianism, there was paleo, there was a lemon detox diet, 
what was everything. Now it's the ketogenic diet, which I don't agree about. Um, and then there was veganism. So I was like, okay, I'll learn about it. Let's see where it goes. Uh, I didn't really think much about it because there wasn't too much government information. It was mainly all the vegan doctors like Bill and I, Dr. McDougall, who was talking and pushing all the vegan information. Um, but it was, it was purely his friends. Friends that, that, that just became vegan for some reason. Biggest um, meat eaters become vegan. You don't know why, why you're vegan. You used to eat like me, you know. Um, but it was a stage. It, was, it took me about four years to be, have a really strong belief about veganism. And then the last year was just trying to be, um, trying to be more vegan more often. Sometimes with a social circle when everyone else is eating meat, when there's birthday parties, when there's engagements, when there's weddings, sometimes with the pressures of alcohol, it's hard to say no to eating. So during the last 18 months, it was probably, um, I watched a lot of documentaries as well, like Forks of Nuts, Cowspiracy, um, recently What the Hell, that's going to be premiering. Uh, all those other things that helped me understand what was actually going on. So I felt a connection with the animals, kind of souls, treating them just like people. And then there was the environmental aspect as well. So it's not so cold. But it was mainly social, so I had to say no to my friends. Because I would eat, I would be a vegan for about a month, and I see my friends. I would be a vegan for about two weeks, and I would see my friends. All these social circle events that just... It's hard for me. I think it's also hard if you don't have people that um, you can relate to that are vegan or not if there's someone you know that is in your sort of area and does the same sort of thing you know or even looks like you it's hard to see yourself unless you see someone like you that is vegan or doing the diet and, and I just wanted to mention too what you're talking about with all the different food types and the different dietary things veganism is not just a diet um, it's a lifestyle it's a way of life that a lot of us choose to commit to because we believe in it for many other reasons than just health and that can be environmental and especially animal related issues and um, I just wanted to talk about some basic foods of, of what you could consume in your diet and probably a lot of them you would hopefully already be eating so one of the first things would be fruits and vegetables so who eats fruits who eats vegetables? Okay, cool, that's one tip. You've got one lot of those vegan staples in your diet you're already having. And the next one um, would be nuts and seeds. So who has, say, peanut butter in the morning or something for toast? Um, some things like that. I love tahini or anything with sesame seeds. So that's awesome. So there's another tip. You've already got another thing off, off on your list, which is nuts and seeds. And another thing um, that you could add to that is grains and pseudo grains. So for example, brown rice and um, polenta, cornmeal, which is polenta, um, barley, many other things like that. And there's some ones you might not know, like quinoa. Well, people know about that a bit more nowadays. Quinoa, there's amaranth and um, teff even. I think that's becoming big at the moment, maybe. And um, there's so many things like that. And quinoa and um, amaranth are not really grains. They're actually seeds, but they're used as grains. So you cook them in a similar sort of way, like one cup of the grain to one to two cups of the water. So they're quite easy to use. And then, um, so how many people have rice? You know? Cool. So that's like three out of four already. And on to the fourth one is um, beans, legumes and pulses. So these things cover a lot of different things, including soy, so soybeans, and you can have edamame, which is like the raw soybean, which is green. If you've ever seen that when you go out to say a Japanese place or a, um, a Thai or an Asian sort of style um, place, they might have that as an entree. Um, you can also have, one of my favourites is tempeh, which is made from soybeans, there's also tofu, um, and then we get into other beans, so there's lentils, um, what else, what else we got, lentils, kidney beans, chickpeas, yeah, mung beans, let's sell them out. 
butter beans, bolotti beans, so many things. Um, and if you have baked beans, for example, if you really like baked beans, there's another thing ticked off on your list. So from those four things that I told you, we've got fruits and vegetables, we've got nuts and seeds, we've got grains, and we've got beans, legumes and pulses. Who um, was able to cover all of those things just in what I just said then? So you're eating what vegans eat already. So it's not too much of a step for you to try and add these things into your diet. And it's really easy for, for people to do. And maybe it's just changing the way you think a bit too. So I know a lot of um, people just have the meat, which is the main bit of the meal. And then you've got a few veggies that are, and especially vegetables that are the garnish. So you want to change the mindset a bit where it's the vegetables that's the main part. And you, you, know, you want to make sure you have all those things that I just mentioned in your diet. And I always try to aim to have beans, greens, and grains. So if you focus on those things for every or most of your meals, beans, greens, grains, then you'll cover a lot of those things. And you'll get the majority of your vitamins, minerals, and nutrients if you if you focus on those sort of things. Welcome to the And um, I thought I might just move over to you, Raymond, to ask um, one of the main things um, that I get asked 20 years later and I just actually released a vegan athletes book and um, there's over a hundred athletes in the book and something like 70% of them still get asked where do you get your protein and some of them have got very big muscles so I think they're doing okay, I think they've got it under control but what do you normally say Raymond if someone says where do you get your vegan protein from? Yeah, protein. Um, it is a big topic but it's not really a big topic. I guess Cameron in QA here previously was talking about protein sources or vegan food. Um, but simply the food groups that you were talking about, that was perfect. That's like all there. Um, I guess the only mineral that you need that's not included in the five food groups is vitamin B12. I'll talk about that later. Regarding protein, you have the lentils, so all your beans, lentils, chickpeas, um, then you have your tofu, the soybeans, things like that. Of course, your collard greens, your broccoli, your kale, your spinach, and the last thing, your nuts and seeds. So you focus on just the more vegan food groups, it's all there. Um, it's been said that if you look at the recommendations of the Australian Guide of the uh, Reference Values, they actually recommend for vegetarians to be 1.5 times the amount. When you look at the research, it says there really hasn't been a protein deficiency. So research says you have to have 1.5 times. Research says maybe not so. Um, if you stick to five serves of whole grains a day, three serves of beans and leg beans, one or two serves of nuts and seeds, and if you can, five serves of whole grains, you can protein and protein. It'll just happen. There's protein in everything. Yeah, there is. And it just, it's in the amount that varies. That's, that's the only thing. And it just depends what you're... Like, if you are a bodybuilder and you work out a lot, you might need more protein than just other people who are on the computer all day, for example, would need. Um, and so, what are the, what's the main question other than protein that you might get asked from people? Uh, and for women, probably calcium. It's like arthritis, osteoporosis. <laughs> Um, B12 because obviously B12, there are natural sources, there are vegan sources, then we have animal sources. Um, iron, why, why am I feeling so tired? Why my low iron levels have not that kind of increase? Do I need flush iron shots? Um, and see, that's the top three that I get asked about. And energy levels probably, because when you're in a vegan diet, sometimes you just don't need enough. Everything is so low calories. Unless you're going for the vegan junk food, that's a different story, because that's all attractive oil. Uh, but yeah, first thing first is I make good energy, and then I cook through all the other ingredients. And so what's the thing that you would normally see? Is there something you um, jumps out other than what you said if they're eating enough? Is there anything else that jumps out? Uh, what? Probably iron is one. Iron and B12. 
And there's a lot of problems that you can get from having a B12 deficiency. So it's something you need to be right on top of um, before it happens, because sometimes when you have those the symptoms, it's too late. So can yeah. you tell us um, why we need vitamin B12? Uh, we need B12, I guess, for our blood, for our nervous system, a lot of special activities. Um, and we You can also get an injection. Not sure how vegan some of the injections are. Um, and in regards to nutritional yeast, um, there's vitamin B12 in nutritional yeast if it's added. So it's not it's not a um, it's not it just happens to be nutritional yeast. And in Australia, ours does not have B12. That's only in America. And what about? Um, so, iron you were mentioning as well, what would you suggest for people with iron? The biggest thing with iron is that, well, no, the biggest thing with iron is that you need to understand what foods increase the absorption of iron and what foods decrease the absorption of iron. And you see, and I guess eating foods that are also high in iron. So it's a balance of those three. And you find that when uh, I've seen people through the door, people are not eating iron rich foods. People are uh, using behaviors that increase the absorption of iron. And they're also not eating the foods to increase it. So you probably may have heard the doctors find the same health of iron absorption. Every time you have high iron foods, so pretty much it's all good things like you said, you all that foods. Um, please have vitamin C. I actually recommend have vitamin C every single meal just to maximize the iron levels. So when we say uh, maximize, because there's like a fusion of uh, when the nutrients come together, and your iron levels can actually increase by two to three or five times of what your iron content That's really important. And to the things that increase iron absorption, you have 
uh, I don't like saying this, have caffeine intake. So, um, all those tannins and things like that, which is in caffeine, is, uh, is in, um, sorry, soft drink, coffee, etc., etc. So, for all those tannins, caffeine drinkers, always tell them to lay off it. It gives you have low high levels. Um, some alcohols also have um, uh, nutrients that blow up high levels. Just have to look it up. I can't remember exactly what it's called. There's alcohol intake as well. And then there was the phytates, which is from the um, it's just the skin of the nuts and seeds and all your legumes. Don't worry about that because even when it does reduce iron absorption, as long as you have vitamin C, it will reduce it all the way up. The key thing is pretty much stopping your caffeine intake and having vitamin C. And what would you say for vitamin C with meals? What do you think? Well, I I would have what, what greens has, what with. Has vitamin C? I would have greens with anything citrus. So like I would have say when I make my green smoothie, I would have lemon and lime with that. Or when when I make a stir fry with say kale, I would have um, red capsicum with it. So they're yeah. the things that I would do personally. Yeah, capsicum is great, wild moss is great, orange is great, kiwi is great. All your um, citrusy fruits are good. They all paint some form, guava, capsicum, oranges, kiwis, um, and yeah, but yeah, stick with the fruits, have this combination. And um, on that, on the last one, um, calcium. Calcium. <laughs> Calcium's uh, another interesting one because we need about one gram of calcium per day uh, on average. And it's it's hard because there's not many foods that's high in calcium. And you, you may have heard on Facebook, there was on, what was it, ABC, Panel 9, and there was a dietitian. The, the dietitian and they had something to do with the dairy industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they, uh, they were like, what's a good source of calcium, etc, etc. There is a little bit of truth in that, because unless you're drinking um, black milk that is fortified with calcium four times a day, you will not need the calcium needs. And what's scary about calcium is that calcium is responsible for what about um, uh, everyday goals. I can't remember exactly, but if you don't get enough calcium to meet the activity of our body, the calcium is actually excreted from our teeth and our bones. And that's when osteoporosis and arthritis starts to um, come in. And there was a research actually, and it said that um, vegetarians and vegans are actually 10% have a 10% higher risk to get arthritis and osteoporosis compared to one non-vegetarians. That's the, probably purely because of that. There's also a lot of um, Thank you, studies that would say the opposite. So, so, so I guess it just depends on the source of dairy is or not, maybe. <laughs> but in a, in a, in a summary, um, please have your plan milk that's fortified with calcium. Um, one serving 250 mils is about try to have more greens in every meal you know that's one of the things that's really important someone 
Okay, let's talk about our favourite foods. Why don't we do that? So I think um, greens are awesome, like say kale, um, yeah, um, spinach, I love baby spinach leaves. What you um, said before, and edamame. Edamame, and yeah. Have that as well. Yeah, it's it's so nice. and that's fine protein too. It is. Yeah. Protein, calcium, it's not high, but it happens. There is some there. And uh, berries, I love berries. I like um, frozen berries in my smoothies, they're pretty good. Um, quinoa, one of my faves, I love chia, I have chia seeds, so every morning, I might tell you what I would normally eat, so every morning I make the chia pudding, I don't make it every morning, I make it in bulk and then I eat it every morning, so I have, there's one litre of, I use brown rice milk, and I have a cup of uh, chia seeds, and I have a cup of oats, just to add some more protein to it of the morning, and I just mix that all through. I let it sit for say half an hour and then I have say a pack maybe 400-500 grams of um, frozen berries and I add that to it, mix it in and then that's ready for my week. And when I eat it I can add some cacao nibs, some coconut flakes, some pepitas or pumpkin seeds and um, sometimes I make my own co coconut yogurt too so I um, might add a bit of that to that every now and then. And what do you have for breakfast? Uh, well, I grew up as an Asian family, so our breakfast is the same as our lunch and family. <laughs> <laughs> so it's either rice, um, quinoa, uh, lentils, or couscous. Mm -hmm. They're probably my top four favorite starches. Mm -hmm. um, but it's funny, you guys know this on a moment, moment there, the calorie content of white rice and brown rice is like almost double. <laughs> Does anyone have any breakfast ideas they want to share that they love? Scrambled tofu, I like scrambled yeah. Oh, smoothies. Yeah, smoothies are awesome. Yeah, I um, I make a batch of like a uh, chocolate berry smoothie and I make a green like vitality juice as well. So I have my green juice every morning and chia and a smoothie a bit later. I love um, tofu, scrambled tofu, can you were talking about in the last sort of demo and um, yeah it's easy just get some sort of tofu, crumble it up, put some spices or herbs in it. I love nutritional yeast, rags or amino acids or um, soy or something like that, some chili always, a bit of turmeric and some greens. That's about it. That's pretty easy. I like that one. Anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, well, recently I did a couple of videos and I realized I made a pizza that used white salad base as opposed to flour just to get more grapes um, in. And then I think last week I made a broccoli soup. Well, wonderful the so I the broccoli, the next group is the adult and soft, division of the Queensland like World Dance Academy. Uh, the average age and, is 45 uh, ginger, and I have undergone extensive training uh, to perform on stage tonight. Coconut but it's welcome to the Queensland World Dance Academy. There's um, I can't remember the brand. Does anyone know that? Say green or red or yellow Thai little um sauces you can buy. I am. That's I know that name, but there's another one I'm thinking of. Very small. Who? Yeah, I think it's that. But they're tiny little um uh Thai sort of sauces. Red, green, yellow, masaman, curries, and they're all vegan. And um, I discovered them with a friend. We were just at a Thai restaurant in the valley one day, and we were just double checking the sauce was vegan. And they said, "Oh yeah, I'll bring it out for you. Show you what we use." And they brought us out, and we're like, "Oh, that's amazing!" And it's quite some of them are quite hot, which I like. But it's really easy. You just use that sauce, um, that sauce, 
coconut milk or coconut cream and some sort of bean like chickpeas or tofu or tempeh and just cook that all up together. You can add some greens if you like and make some sort of rice or anything like that. that I think that's a pretty easy meal and really quite quick to do as well. What's your favourite easy meal? Very easy meal. If I'm really on the go, I just think uh, a nice smoothie. A nice, you know, um, milk blend of obviously. You have your aquafine flax seeds, like prebiotic powders, uh, maybe some hemp seeds as well, and just blend it up. Uh, if it's on the go, I've actually tried a few um, rice cookers as well, and the cheap Asian rice cookers actually cook it the best because it's the cheapest. So it just, you just get one cup or two cups of rice, use the same amount of water, I'll pour it in, and I'll just go, you know, in about 10 minutes or it's done, take a shower and it's done. And usually on that you put nutritional yeast. If you get really lazy, you just put all the flavors in the rice cooker so it cooks by itself. Um, it depends if I'm out of time or if I have to. But um, cooking in a rice cooker is definitely very good. Yeah, it's a slow cooker, I know a lot of people use slow cooker. And yeah, um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? Um, so this plant has calcium levels below calcium. Do you have any other plants? I don't. No. What well, do you? Well, some soy milks will have this side. Uh, this is uh, this plant has calcium levels. Uh, it's not as good as it is. I mean, is it all the side? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one, to be honest. I can guess what you're trying to find out of us. I think it's potentially one from the actual plant source and once manufactured. I think with anything, it's always better to go with the natural source. I don't, I've, ne I've never seen any studies comparing that or any, anything about that, to be honest. So. So um, I think it's yeah I just I think it's an education thing and it's mainstream media and if you think about how the media are like you have to have milk to have calcium and you have to have meat to have protein and most people believe that and most people don't realise that there's anything outside of that so um, I'm not sure it's just something long term we all have to work at bit by bit. <laughs> My favorite, my personal favorite is called Nutrition Facts of All. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I don't know. Uh, Michael Gregor runs Nutrition Facts and he's got an awesome book, How Not to Die, as well, <laughs> which is really great. cool. Yeah, and I like um, uh, the people who wrote Vegan for Life. Um, oh, yeah, the Vegan RD, Jack Yeah, so the Vegan RD, um, oh, what's her name again? Gina Messina, yeah, and Jenny, and um, Jenny, Jenny, Virginia Messina, that's it, and um, Jack Norris, and they're both medical doctors in the US. Registered dietitians in the US, that's correct, yeah. Long day. <laughs> so, yeah, they'd be good websites to check out. And yes. um, what about, I know um, Robin Shooter in Sydney, she's got a, a good website, it's called Total Empowered Health or something like that, she's pretty good. Um, Amanda Benham who does um, hum, Human Herbivore, um, she's local, she's got a good website as well. Um, there's a few others interstate, but not, not too many in Queensland, so maybe that's where you can do some stuff, Brendan. Uh, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy the world, by the way. And what you mentioned.
mentioned your um, YouTube video channel before. What's where can people find that? Uh, it's just me and Palette. So Palette, like the artist Palette, um, P A L E T. -T. Mm -hmm. And you'll see uh, cooking videos. I'm going to be pushing out articles as well, like the latest research in vegan nutrition and things like that. And have you got a website or Facebook uh, or anything? Yeah, as well? Facebook is vegan Palette again, yeah, and the website is vegan Palette.com. Mm -hmm. And um, you can follow my VivaLaVegan.net website. There's over a decade's worth of content on there. So there's lots of interviews, recipes, articles, blogs, um, how-to videos, things like that. And yeah, I'm across all the social media channels. So Facebook, YouTube, Google+, Plus, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, etc. And um, also come to... <laughs> <laughs> That's a few, yes I know. Um, come along to the Vegetarian Vegan of um, Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland store that's just down in the merchandise section number 27. Uh, we've got a big range of books for sale. We're at ten dollars each book. So if you want to find more about nutrition, um, if you'd like to find some more recipes, some recipe ideas, even some ethical um, books as well, if you'd like to learn more about um, why people choose to become vegan from an animal rights perspective. There's a lot of books over there as well. And um, yeah, come say hi to the store. And I'm also giving a talk tomorrow. And we've got two food demos on Sunday. So if you've got any friends or family, love for you to share the word about that. And thanks for coming. Hope you've learned something. Thank you very much for joining me tonight, Romans. And Thanks see you soon.